In the last episode, we followed Valentina as she began a systematic cataloging of all biomes on Kerbin. Our mapping project also produced a full visual map. This will help to guide and aid in our exploration. Today, with Valentina en route back from the Highlands, Durgo steps up to continue the work. With a questionable takeoff, he sets out on a course that will take him over the biomes that Valentina completed. Unfortunately unable to control a craft with six clicky keyboard buttons, Durgus comes in a little steep, fast and on one single wheel. But at least he survives the landing, as well as hold up our consistency of not making a single successful landing. Thus, bringing us to our first biome of this episode, the desert. As hot as a crack in's crack, and filled with nothing but sand, a probe could have probably done this site with a photograph, and he has lots of time to wait for a pickup, but playing it safe, he stays in his climate-controlled cockpit for the most part. Work begins on a new plane, one that will be able to carry two and bring Durgas home faster than the recovery team can sail over to get him. With Valentina demanding to test every craft, she takes off to the skies, but the first test maneuver, the craft goes into an uncontrolled spin. Just first class design right there. We have lost on a with Valentina occupied. Bill sets off to test the new two-seater craft. However, in the air it pitches up violently. So much so, it also enters an uncontrolled spin. What a dark day this has truly been. We have also lost Bill during the ensuing committee of slapdash designs investigation. It is decided that the tail design is wholly inadequate. So instead of a blended control system, a traditional system is installed with separated control surfaces and far more stabilization. It now comes down to Jebba Deer to test this craft. So far it has proven to have been the most dangerous craft yet, getting the name of Robinson. In the air, it finally proves that turning without entering a spin is possible. In barely any time, Jeb is nearing the last known location of Durgaz, beginning a search pattern in order to locate him. Once sighted, Jeb lines up for a landing nearby. Once again, the pilot's life depends on six clicky keyboard keys, a hope and a prayer. But in keeping to consistency, we crash, with only the cockpit surviving. With nothing to do but wait for the recovery team, Jebe Deer decides to complete his mission and locate Durgaz. This, however, requires leaving the safety of the air-conditioned cockpit. With a spacesuit that cannot come off, come on, come on. it was clearly, clearly not the smartest smart smart decision. decision. Finding himself reduced to the role of a mere babysitter, it is now up to Durgos to keep Jeb safe until the recovery and medical teams arrive. With something colder in mind for the next location, they burn north to the ice biome. With them both being the same, the northern one is picked so they could truly say that they are indeed on top of the world. At these extreme high latitudes, the land is forever in twilight, the sun never rising or setting, at least here, there is more things to catalog. There is to different rock specimens close to the landing site. Kerbin is snow rock ensis and a Kerbin is rocky snow ensis are catalogued. Then ready to get back to under the hill, Bilbo meets up with the recovery team. During Bilbo's northern excursion and Jeb's little trip, 
there has been an expedition to create a region by a map of Kerbin. This will allow us to target our experiments rather than just wandering around and hoping to be in the right spot with the right scanner. And once the map is complete, we begin to fly over every biome region to gather atmospheric samples and data. The mapping data is fed into the flight radar, allowing us to see the regions in the pilot's heads-up display. With the safety record as it stands, and the recent loss of certain members of the force, Tim decides to stall the craft just above the water surface, rather than risk a hard landing. Meanwhile back at the KSC, our team is working on their first capsule ejection system, and keeping with the name Slapdash Designs, the design firm just slapped some small boosters onto a capsule, and then proceeded to man testing without doing any maths. With a successful test, we can tell that with 100%. Next time we will be doing all the maths and starting with unmanned tests. With many tests and only the basic or parts and tools, our design team finally came up with a watercraft that amazingly works reliably in the manner it was intended. Going forwards and upside right and with first tier parts. But yet again, this is a craft built merely to function regardless of look. Though, but the design team did add in wheels, allowing Sheplock to drive in style right onto the next location, the beach biome. With Tim out of the way, it is time for Sheplock to shine. He begins his biome catalog with samples of both sand and an odd patterned rock called Kirby in his brainy rock ensis and an even stranger, extremely colourful specimen. Kerbina's five pointy ensis is catalogued, something neither fractal like a tree or bilaterally symmetrical like himself. This appears to be radially symmetric, a truly new form of life. And with this biome complete, the free time is used for some relaxation in the form of a swim. Last we come to the most dangerous landing of them all. With nothing but cliffs, and hills we resort to earlier strategy, rolling down the hill and hoping we survive. Also adding to the fun, they attempt this all at night. First, before any survey can be conducted, Bopon has to scour and search for any parts of his craft and mark them for pickup. Once morning comes along, we can finally confirm that we are in the mountain biome. Amazingly, this landing location is full of previously known specimens, trunky needle ensis, brown stringy ensis, green stringy ensis, even some brown boulder ensis. There is a new specimen, dark brown boulder ensis. These appear to live in closely knit family units, rather unlike the other forms of boulder ensis, which are more spread out. Waiting for his pickup, Burpont takes a moment to just experience this location's magnificence. With our first tier of parts all unlocked and a good start on the second tier, we now begin to move on to realizing Valentina's dream of going to the mum. However, with Jeb caught up in some questionable methods of coping, he has disappeared from the KSC. He was last seen running into the wild on a small island. <laughs>